Hi, my name's Leo Lapa, and I want to talk to you a bit about DBIX class. Um, I've got a couple of assumptions. So I'm going to assume that you know a bit about Perl and using objects, um, that you know a little bit about databases and using foreign keys. So what is DBIX class? Uh, find it's an ORM, but I'll get related to that. What does that mean? Well, it means that you can communicate between SQL, your database, and Perl objects. Uh, it's simple, it's powerful, it's complex, it's fab, and it's confusing all at the same time. There are many different ORMs, uh, and if you were at uh, Matt Trout's rant yesterday, sorry, I mean talk yesterday, um, he was explaining how DBX Plus originally had been developed as a project to now allow people to create further ORMs. But it really has come a long way uh, from that initial work. So, why this talk? Well, I'd like to help you not make the same mistakes that I've made. Um, Hey, it help learning DBX class be a little faster. And then also to make your coding easier in general. So a standard table setup. Let's say we've got um, books and we're going to have some authors as well. So an author's table might look something like this. So we, we create an author's table. Uh, we give it an ID and an auto incrementer. Um, we have a name for the author. And we have some other stuff added on to the end. So a couple of tips at this point. Um, I personally always put table names as plurals. Uh, speaking to Matt Trout, he says, no, you should never do that. You should always have it as singular. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. It's about what you find easiest. And the key thing being that you are consistent throughout. Um, also, when you're starting doing any database stuff, start in UTF-8. It will make your life a lot easier as time goes on. So let's look at that. If we go back to our table, we've got authors with a capital A, with an S here. Uh, and we've got an INODB engine because we're going to be doing relational stuff. And we've got a character set of UTF-8. So we need a books table. Similar sort of thing. We're going to create a table and call it books. Uh, we're going to have an auto-incrementing ID on that. Uh, we're going to have a title for our book. And we're going to have an author. Um, that author is going to have a foreign key through to our authors table. Uh, so we set that up here, uh, again the usual stuff at the bottom. So a, a couple of tips on when you're setting up things with relationships. Make sure, in my case, the link name is a singular, so a book has an author singular. Um, and also check that the foreign key matches through is the same type. So if we go back and have a look here, you see the author has got int8 and it's got the foreign key through to the other table. So let's have a quick look at CRUD. CRUD is create, retrieve, update, delete. It's the standard sorts of things you tend to do with databases. We have a look at how to do that by hand with SQL, the manual way. So we have to write preparing, we've got to write inserting into books, and putting in placeholders, for, which we all do first, helps with security. And then we, and we then get SQL injection attacks. We then execute and we pass in the book title. So, you know, I've got to write all this stuff, and then I've still got to know what the author's ID is at this point, so I've got to <coughs> put that up already somewhere else. Then if I want to retrieve something, I've got to go, well, I've selected this, and I've, because I've got a join going on here, where the, the relationship's going on, then I've got one to have an alias on the author name here. Um, and then have, have, have I retrieve <coughs> that, I go through, and well, the results I get back are uh, a hash ref, so... I can then pull those out, I've got, I've got to deal with all of those, I've got to remember I made the alias and called it author name. And when I want to do an update, again I've got to go and prepare all of that SQL, I think I've got to do the placeholders and I've still got to know the book ID of the thing I want to do the update on. And equally the same, I've got to keep track of that book ID when I want to do a delete. Now with DBX class, it all becomes a lot easier. We use a book model. And I'll show you how to create models shortly. So all we do is on that model we call create. We give it a title. And we say what the author is. Uh, I, I do know I'm passing an author ID here. I'll show you again how that becomes simple later. Uh, and you finish it. That, that's it. That's your create. Look, no SQL. Lovely. A little tip here is when you're creating something, make sure not to pass in the primary key. Even if it's undead for... Uh, 
just an empty string, the database will be correct, but the object you get back will give you back that undepth or that uh, empty string. So when you're creating something, don't pass that field in. So we pass that in. Um, now we want to start getting a bit more complicated. So we'll look at the author's model. Let's go and create an author. Exactly the same sort of thing. We'll create an author called Terry Pratchett. Um, but then we want to create the relationship between an author and their books. So here we can use the create related. So we've got our Terry Pratchett uh, object. We call create related. We say, well, the relationship is we're going through to the books table. And we want to create a book with another disk world book. There's got to be another one by now. Um, and that's it. That then goes and creates it for us. Now, in fact, DBX class has some very useful features. So one of them is it automatically creates methods for you. So you can call on Terry Pratchett, add two books, and it's created that books bit, and we'll pass in the title. And that will then create that relationship. So it's exactly the same as having passed in books here to here, but we have simplified the whole interface. Let me show you how to retrieve stuff. Of course, with Perl, there's always more than one way to do it. Um, let me show you the simple. Fine, pass in a book ID or a primary key of any sort, unique identifier, and that will give you that individual object back. Uh, of course, you can do a search. Um, so here we'll pass in a specific book title we're after. Uh, say, well, we're only after a single result out of that. Um, or you can get more complicated and get a list of books back. So any books by this specific author. So having passed in the author ID here, we get an array back. What else can you do? Well, you can also say iterate over your result set. So once you've done your search, you, get a, you can have a result set object back. And here we can iterate over that. And then the really nice bits start to happen. So this is now a method call. And equally, book to authors, you then get the author's object back. So you don't have to say on a specific field. You will get the entire author object back. And DBX class does clever things with not fetching too much data if you don't want it. There's a lot of things you can configure, but you can use it straight out of the box and it will just be smart for you. So here we've got our author object back, and then we can call the name method on that object to then populate our page. Some other things. Um, so we can go and um, do very complicated searches. In fact, what DBX class uses is something called SQL abstract. You basically build up a data structure that describes the search you want to do. And through that, you then pass that into the search, which allows you to then search in any combinations that you would like. Updates, very easy. You take your object, you call update on it, and you tell it what you want to update. It's as simple as that. It will save that back to the database. If you want to, you can take your object, call the method on it. So let's say we want to change the author name. Instead of just calling it with nothing in the parentheses, you call it with the new value. That sets it in your object. And then you just call the update function, and it will automatically save that back to the database. Delete, even easier. You've got your object, delete it. Fantastic, that's now out of your database. So as you can see, it's very easy to do a lot of stuff with no SQL, and that's the beauty of it. So as I mentioned, I skimmed over how you create these book models or author models in the first place, and that's done with schemas. So let me show you one. This is a bookstore schema result authors. Um, so here you tell it your, your base class is DBIX class. You've got to load the core components. Uh, which table you're talking about, we're talking about the author's table, and then you put in all the column information. So we've got an ID, it's an int, we've got a name, it's a bar chart. We set what our primary key is, and we also set up this relationship. So we say that the author has many books, and the code that that's going to represent is going to be our schema result books. And we say it's the foreign author field is linking to our self-ID. And we then have to do the same for the book side of things. So as you can see, very similar thing. The only real difference is being here, where in fact we're saying a, a book belongs to an individual author. So the relationship changes slightly. But that's just too much typing. 
This is where schema loader comes in for you. What it does is it goes and looks at your database, how you set your database up, and it then produces those, that code for you. So we can have a look at a simple example here. Uh, we're using uh, DBX class schema loader, and we're going to tell it we want to use the make schema at uh, method. So you set up what your database is, your username, your password, and from that you call make schema. So we're going to say, well, we want our schema to be created in the bookstore schema namespace. We want it to use namespaces, and that's quite a key thing, because that allows you to split out the individual uh, packages for an individual row compared to how you want to configure searches, and I'll show you that in a second. We tell it where we want to dump that uh, code out to, and then use your normal database connection string at the bottom. So as I said, it, using namespaces splits the logic out cleanly. So in our case here, we're going to have bookstore schema results x, and that's for an individual row, or bookstore schema results set x, and that's for a set of searches, or that's for providing extra abilities to searches and dealing with the results that you get back. So I can run my little script and it tells me it's dumped it out. So if that, I then have a look in my lib directory, it's automatically created all of my hierarchy and it's dropped in my authors and my books modules here. Now I also then automatically go and create a results set directory so that later on if I want to add any extras I know where to put them. You can actually use um, DBX schema loader dynamically so that as you start your code up, it looks at the database. And that's very useful for doing development work. It means that you can make a tweak to your database, restart your code, and it's automatically picked up. But that's not how you should be doing production code. Production code, you should be shipping all of these modules out. Um, I say should. Um, I've been running for five years using it dynamically. Uh, we only switched over last week. But so it's fine, but it's not ideal. So what happens when you kick this stuff out? Well, this is the file, this is bookstore schema. And as you can see, it says, do not modify anything above this line. The reason that is, is that if you then rerun your code, you can put anything you like down here, but DBX class schema loader knows it can control everything above that. So it can work out what you changed in your database and then update the code accordingly but you still have space below this line to do whatever you like. So this being our top level uh, bookstore schema, we're going to actually add in how to connect to this schema. So again, we set up our database, username, password, and we tell it this is how you do your connection. So that has created our schema and our way of then interacting with all these DBX class models. Uh, okay. So, we need to use our schema. How do you actually put that together? So here's a little script. We basically say, use the bookstore schema. We can then say, well, we want our author model here. We're going to use the schema and connect to the result set authors. Below that, I can then go create a new author. Uh, Douglas Adams, I can go and add some, a new book. Uh, we can add things like uh, date published fields, for example. And, Again, putting the date time into that, uh, give it a title. And then when you look in the database, it's automatically created our Douglas Adams. And equally, it's then selected everything from books. We can see that the title's 42, and the key thing is the author ID matches through for us. So when it comes to debugging this stuff, um, some of the messages can be a bit confusing. Um, but if I ran that debug, so I get back. So all I've done is I turn on DBIC trace and then I run my script. That then spits out all of the database commands that are actually happening. 